Hi guys, welcome back. This is a modified version of the ALS 2D. This version of advanced locomotion system that I created time ago for side scroller games, for the two dimensional side scroller. Uh, the idea is to is to extend or, or upgrade or be upgrading this package to cover all kind of games that we would like to do. Uh, in the sample of today, I will show you um, like a side scroller shooter and uh, also more like more like a adventure game, like it can be the old uh, flashback or games like this, like, like Prince of Persia, but this have shooting weapons. That is something that you ask uh, to me. Also, I will be showing the the aim the aiming system that is can be controlled with the gamepad or, or with the mouse and we will be show you, showing you how everything is working by now you can see that it, it contains doors and I will show you how they work triggers to open the doors also the triggers can, can be needing a key um, you have this key this is a key in a sample that you need to pick up before being able to open this uh, trigger, I have elevators, uh, have weapons, more doors, enemies, more elevators. Uh, so sorry, my <laughs> wife is there with my daughter. They probably didn't realize that I'm recording. Anyway, let's see how this explodes. Uh, more enemies, more elevators. Ah, laser beams that I didn't show you. These laser beams can be moving and can be moving in the, in the direction you, you say. This is example is moving to the left. This is moving up. And this is moving up as well. And this is moving to the right. Uh, here we have a pick up all that is energy and more enemies. Speaking about the enemies, now I started doing the um, a very simple events system like uh, the horror engine, but it's quite more simple. So, in example, in an enemy, uh, you scroll down to the settings, you have here AI and events starting by the settings you have the damage from fall it will be damaged if it fall during some time this is the weapon that the that the this enemy is carrying is carrying uh, the, the rifle in the ai we have the side radius the hit recovery time that is when you hit him how much time it will take to uh, start shooting again the peripheral vision angle let me expand this a bit uh, the delay before attack, this is when he reaches you, how much time he will take to, to start shooting. Then these are patrol. Um, I believe this I have shown this before, but in here in example we have these two enemies. This enemy has to follow, is patrolling, I have two points to patrol, that is this point and this point. Each point have a, like a this point in example in the settings have the wait here time so that means that this enemy will go to there will wait two seconds like in here and will come back to this one and will wait two seconds in here before returning to the other e continuing with the AI if we show if we close this you see that this follow path is tick then chasing will chase. This means that it will be patrolling until he, until the enemy detects you. If the enemy detects you, it will start chasing you and shooting, and will stop patrolling until the, he cannot see you again. This is roaming. That is something new. It can be basically it can be patrolling or it can be roaming. The the in example these ones uh, here are roaming in a certain area. This are rooming uh, this is the pause this will this, this will get a, a random point 
uh, with to, with a hundred far of them. And then we'll start, we'll pause half a second and we'll then continue roaming. Um, this is defend, that is something new as well. This in example here, you see they have some kind of barrier defense in here. So this one is, you can see the patrol is unchecked, chasing is unchecked, roaming is unchecked, and defend is checked. This is the shooting and it should be waiting crouch. This means that it will be crouch for one second and then will stand up and shoot. I don't, I don't know if you remember the old games where the enemies were hi hidden behind the boxes and shooting. So this is basically. Now you can see that we have events. Okay. So in example, this one has an event. If you go to events, it has an event. It can be an array of events. This event it will be triggered on death. That is the only one that is working now because I had not too much time to, to implement it. Um, there is we have three different events by now. That is the uh, create a message on the screen. Create a message will be the uh, this waiting are not working by now, but they are there for the future. The, we have th three different uh, sections for the text. We have the left side, that is the pretext. This, we have a bold text, like in Oral Engine, and we have a post text, that is a post text that will be showing after the bold text. Uh, we have the time that the text will be uh, shown or will be printed on, on the screen. Then we have another kind of event, that is a spawn event. That is this, an example, I is tick, the spawn, uh, this waiting time is not working, the actor that is going to, uh, to spawn is a rifle, then you can select to put the, the location, rotation and scale, uh, like in horror engine, but in horror engine, in example, what I miss is to have the option to, to spawn in the player position. So, in example, this is going to spawn a rifle, uh, in the player position with this rotation and scale. So you can select the rotation and scale and tick player position. So this means, in example, if the, if the player is going to left or going to right and you kill him in one position, the thing or the item that is going to drop or to spawn will be in the, uh, in the position that the player is at the moment. And then we have the load level event that is to, to load it, that this is basically going to load a new level. For example, this is the boss, let's say, so it has the loading the main menu. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this is working all together uh, for you to, sh to see how it is. I will play a bit. You can see that the door is closed. Now, in example, if we try to jump in here, we need to take more velocity. I remember this from flashback. So now this one is asking you for the green card. So now we have the green card collected. So now that we have the green card, open. So now this is an elevator. And now we are going to pick a weapon. And now you can see if I press the if I press the right mouse and mouse button, that is the the aiming. You can see that I can move the let's say the cursor to anywhere on the screen. Okay. If I move to the left, the character will rotate. If I'm aiming and I move right and left, you see, it will keep facing the cursor. Huh. 
I don't know exactly this is what the, what you asked me to do that is the, my friend Pedro uh, I believe it's more close to abuse I, I said it in, in Discord it's more close to the abuse I remember abuse game it was something like this I believe it's cool cool when the when the cursor touch a you see that now if the, if the cursor hits a uh, enemy it will become red so now we are going to open this so there is one enemy that i said to drop a uh, health and create a message so you will be able to see you see there is the message and the health by the event the death event Again. Okay, so this is well. As you can see, everything that is that I'm doing in this project is fully replicated. So I can show you very quickly. Both playing as a client, in example. So you can see here the client, one of the game, the players, and other. We'll move this to the. Smaller, bigger. Okay. So now we have here. I cannot go. <gasps> also, the messages are shown only on the player that is the, the one that is. You see, this, it is not shown in the other player. that is fully replicated everything um, I will show you now how to create a door because it's, it's, well, if you want to create something like this in here it's a bit messy sometimes so I will, I will create a new door with a new key card and a new everything so for this you need to go to super grid that is the new thing, the new asset that is free in marketplace that is, I have been able to create this very quickly it has their own tutorials but I will be showing you how I created this in example for this I created my own BP interactable size in example this, so once you add it to the, to the uh, scenario 
click on editing so you will be able to see everything that you are doing in the sample you can expand it I will create some kind of a door um, now what I'm going to do is to expand it to the top so this in the sample is the position for close door let's say so I will copy the scale and we'll put it in the close size and now the easiest will be to paste in here and um, put this to zero but anyway we can do it again we can do this you see this to the very bottom um, we can copy again if you're happy with this you can copy again uh, and say that this is the open okay so now it is editing so now it's open if you click on close you will be able to see how it is open and close okay so it will be closed at the beginning for not letting you to to pass over there so now we are going to put an interactable trigger here let's say i will do is this i will do a bit and also like this these have some options i suppose we'll put it here they have some options that are here this is doesn't matter now but the actor to activate you need to pick it up and now it is the interactable resize this uh, this is the speed to reset let's say that you want it to it is when you're clicking up how fast it's going up and this is the force this is the no push position that is the actual position and this is the force that means that when you click it will go 15 uh, units or pixels down okay so here you have the click material disable material and idle material you can put a, a at any of you wish in the sample so now if i play from here what is going to happen is if i push it you see if I open the door and nothing else happens right okay if you want that if you want a uh, trigger that open and close a door whenever you put it you need to put it as flip-flop this means that you will uh, click once to open click the second time will uh, close it with the flip flop so now it's opening uh, now it's closing now oh, sorry now it's opening again now it's closing with the flip flop uh, now in a sample I will say I will create a pickable here I call it pickable I will put it in the in the way of the character that is minus 970 um, I will put it in here let's say I will call it instead of brick card I will put it test card is the name okay and now we'll say this uh, trigger I will say that need a key yes and the key to open I will say that is this one okay the pickable too let's say that is the test card so now if I play from here I will play one ah, sorry play from here okay so now if I try to open it will tell me you need the test card that is the one we name it remember and nothing else happened so now if I pick it I will open it and you can reuse it, you see? Now the test card is used. This is because the test card has been hasn't been removed from the inventory. If you want the has the this test card to be removed from the inventory in one use, in the pickable, you can select remove after use. You will see it now. So now I need the test card. I will pick the test card. Okay. And 
not once I use it. Next time, you see, I cannot use it anymore. Okay, so with this, I believe I have covered the most complicated part because, uh, in example, for for elevators, they are already done. In here, you can go to these uh, level elements in the tutorial level here. There is the elevator, so you can put an elevator here. You see that this is the elevator, and you can see where is going to go up. So if you want to go up to here only, in a sample. Ah, oh, let me put it way. Not in the way. You see? Uh, nothing else, I believe. Uh, I hope you like this. Of course, you have the you can you have the menu to go to the to the first level to the test level that we had uh, at the beginning. So you can test it at the, uh, with this. Um, to open this level, it is in MV. MV, it is in Maps. Uh, you have here the Size Scroller Adventure. Uh, I'm planning to add a few things more to, to this, like maybe a better AI. I don't know, uh, more hard to beat or, or something like this. Um, and I don't know, I, I believe it is ready to do some kind of side scroller adventure like flashback at the moment. Uh, you only need to create a good environment. Um, and that's it. I hope you like it. You can control everything with the mouse. It, it is not a problem at all. Um, actually, let me try to show you. So now. Ah, I have it, sorry. Yeah, you remember I told you if you... I believe this is... Uh, it is in... I don't know if it is in input... Or it is in... Uh, 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 uh. Ah, you have here. You look for maps and modes the local multiplayer, you have a skip assigning gamepad to player one. So if you skip it, uh, you will be able to test your game to lo your local multiplayer with only one gamepad, one gamepad um, and keyboard. But then the, the gamepad will not be assigned to the player one. So I will remove it by now to be able to, to show you this in, in very quickly. Uh, now. to aim you need to click the aiming and the aiming is controlled with the with the left with the right thumbstick so it is the same that with the mouse to run run is with the by clicking the, the stick
So this is the what I'm going to to upload. This is the will be the late June version. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, for next month, uh, you can choose if I want if you want me to continue with this or half a half, half and a half, and, and switch to to the horror engine or to the one ALS HE and add new things in there as well. But I believe this is taking its form at the moment. Um, I'm planning to add new game modes, like in example uh, something la something similar to Metal Slug or even to Shinobi at some point. So you can also suggest me what you want to, what you would like to see in there. So I will be working on it. Okay. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed. Um, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.